Welcome to Studio 51. I'm Caitlin Wilson. And I'm Tahera Rahman. Studio 51 is a weekly news magazine produced by Loyola University students in Chicago. We're called Studio 51 because we're located on 51 East Pearson in this beautiful street studio in downtown Chicago. You won't want to miss a minute of our show this week. We have a special report on one group's effort to stop violence in Chicago. Our news roundup will tell you what's the latest on the Boston tragedy. And our point-counterpoint segment debates whether the smoking age should be raised to 21. It's been a big week in sports with the NBA playoffs and Loyola's announcement about the Missouri Valley Conference. We have a special report on that. Plus, a foodie report and a look at this weekend's weather. But first, here's Studio 51's News Roundup with Caitlin McMurray. There are new developments concerning the Boston Marathon bombings. At a news conference Thursday morning, the mother of alleged suspects, Zubidat Sarnive, insisted her two sons are innocent. 27-year-old Tomerlin Sarnive was killed in a shootout with police. 19-year-old Jokar Sarnive is still in custody and recovering from gunshot wounds. He's been charged with using a weapon of mass destruction resulting in death and one count of malicious destruction of property. Meanwhile, U.S. officials have found what triggered the bombs during the marathon. They say suspects detonated the bombs using a remote control for toy cars. Tragedy strikes in another part of the world, this time in Bangladesh. According to Reuters, an eight-story building housing a garment factory collapsed, killing 147 people and injuring thousands more. Here in Chicago, there have been many efforts to reduce the number of gang activities and violence. Studio 51's Jason Weeder traveled to Humboldt Park to explore one community's efforts to stop violence. Here's his report. Gang violence is a huge problem in the city of Chicago, but one group is trying to combat that by getting community members involved. Every spring, Friends of the Parks holds an annual cleanup project in Humboldt Park, a neighborhood on Chicago's northwest side. During the cleanup, volunteers are responsible for tasks like planting trees and spreading mulch in different parts of the park. Friends of the Park's education director, Colin Taylor, says Humboldt Park has one of the biggest turnouts. Yeah, Humboldt Park is the biggest Earth Day event across the city. We get upwards of nearly a thousand people every year, uh, mostly from the Humboldt Park community. They come out to clean their community park and, and pitch in. In the past, Humboldt Park has been synonymous with gang activity and violence. In fact, there were 120 homicides in Humboldt Park in the last five years. But today, crime in the neighborhood is actually going down. According to the Chicago Tribune, Humboldt Park saw 60 reports of violent crimes in March of 2013. That's 10% down from last year. Volunteers say events like these are helping turn people away from crime. Humboldt Park is how many acres of programs, baseball, karate programs, like just things to be involved with to get you off the streets and be occupying your time. Idle hands are the devil's play things and unfortunately that plays its role with children and adults and a lot of people in Humble Park right here. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of good programs where kids can stay active after school. To keep the crime rate down, community members like Magdalena Martinez are urging the community to get involved. We want to do a lot of beautiful things here. It's not about just complaining, but doing positive things in our park. Friends of the Park and the Chicago Park District are going to have events all summer for Humboldt Park residents to make sure that this community stays on the up and up. For Studio 51, I'm Jason Weeder. Thanks, Jason. How would you like to bike to work instead of taking the CTA or driving your car? Well, in June, you'll be able to do just that. The City of Chicago has announced Divi a new bike sharing program that will make hundreds of bikes available for commuters to use. The city hopes people will use these bikes to get places that are 30 minutes or less away instead of taking a cab, bus, or your car. You probably don't want to ride that bike in the rain. Talk about April showers. It's rained so much this month that Chicago has had its wettest April ever. Flood warnings are still in effect for rivers throughout Illinois and northwest Indiana. Hopefully those rain showers will turn into May flowers, or will it? We'll find out more with Studio 51's Kristen Immel's weather, weather forecast in the, later in the program. And finally, the President and First Lady have a strategy to dissuade their daughters from getting tattoos. In an appearance on the Today Show, the President responded that if his daughters get a tattoo, the whole family will get the same tattoo in the same place. With those conditions, the girls might think twice about getting inked. With this week's news summary, I'm Caitlin McMurray. Great story about the president and the first family, Caitlin. 
Yeah, you gotta wonder what the, that tattoo will be. I'm thinking maybe the presidential seal, a bald eagle. <laughs> that would be funny, but what about Bo the dog? Would he have to get the tattoo too? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's where we're gonna have to discuss end this discussion. Let's look at some real health, health concerns with Studio 51's Wendy Esparza and her Health Beat report. Thank you to Hera and Caitlin. Health officials are warning parents about a new substance abuse crisis among teens. A recent study says that nearly 25% of all high school students have abused prescription drugs. Among the drugs being abused are Ritalin and Adderall, which are both prescribed for the treatment of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or HDHD. The study was conducted by DrugFree.org and the MedLife Foundation. In other news, the World Health Organization has announced they are funding a $5.5 billion plan to eradicate polio around the world by 2018. Polio is now rare in the United States due to many effective vaccines. However, there are polio outbreaks in several developing countries around the world every year. And do you think the air we're breathing is cleaner? According to the American Lung Association's annual State of the Air report, America's air is getting cleaner. The report cites three different types of pollutants have declined from 2009 to 2011. The American Lung Association credits the Clean Air Act for the improvements. And finally, have you ever wondered how long you'll have to run on a treadmill to work off those french fries? Restaurants may want to adapt this new alternative. Researchers in Texas discovered that listing the amount of time it takes to burn calories was much more effective than simply stating the number of calories on menus. Participants who saw the exercise equivalents of what they would eat chose meals that were on average far lighter in calories. And that's this week's Health Beat for Studio 51. I'm Wendy Esparza. Thanks, Wendy. After the break, our techie takes a look at a new app that helps you find the date of your dreams. And more about Loyola's big sports announcement, we'll have a special report. That and more after the break. And this is the break you'll want to watch. These spots are produced by Loyola's very own at PR students. Flashes of Hope is a national nonprofit organization that creates uplifting portraits of children facing cancer and other life-threatening illnesses while raising money for cancer research. So these kids can look at themselves and say, wow, I was brave. I was beautiful. In some cases, it's the last photograph some of these families will ever have of their children. Life is full of distractions. Some are minor. Crash, look, look who it is. Others are more severe. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. You know, Caitlin, I don't usually follow sports, but I am a big basketball fan. And Chicago basketball lately has been really exciting. So let's get the details of the NBA, along with a special look at Loyola Sports. Here's Sean Keenahan with Sports in 51 Seconds. That's right. It's an exciting time for Chicago basketball. The Bulls are officially in the playoffs. While everyone is buzzing about the Bulls' Game 2 victory to even the series 1-1 to -1 in Brooklyn on Monday, I'm wondering when is Derrick Rose going to take off that Clark Kent suit and become Superman again on the court? Sure, it was great to see Rose cheering and coaching his team courtside, and yes, with five Bulls scoring in double digits, Monday's victory was an extremely impressive team effort. But with all of his banged-up teammates out there battling out on the court, if ever there was a time that the Bulls need Rose, the time is now. Let's go, D. Rose. Get in there. Suck it up. Help out your battered teammates. The Bulls bring the series home on Thursday for Game 3 against the Nets at the United Center. With the NHL playoffs only a few days away, the Chicago Blackhawks beat the Edmonton Oilers 4-1 on Wednesday night. The Hawks will be awarded their second President's Trophy in franchise history for finishing first place in the regular season. Blackhawks goaltender Ray Emery left the game early in the first period with a lower body injury and is listed by the team as day-to-day. -day. Emery has played a large role in the Hawks' record-breaking season. Let's hope the injury is nothing serious. With the White Sox and Cubs dead last in their respective divisions, we will not even discuss baseball. Instead, let's talk football. That's right, although the NFL preseason is still four months away, the NFL draft begins on Thursday night in New York. 
The biggest discussion in Chicago is whether or not the Bears will draft Notre Dame's Monte Teo to fill the shoes of departed linebacker Brian Erlocker. I say go for it. Camp reports have been saying that Teo has put in, he's hit internet hoax in the past, he's looking very strong in the field, and I say the Bears also draft a nice, young, talented quarterback to put a little extra pressure on Jay Cutler to start playing like he has a pulse. I'm Sean Keenahan for Sports in 51 Seconds. Now, here's Studio 51's Mary Sugden for an exciting special report on the future of Loyola Athletics. On April 20th, the Loyola University Chicago Athletic Department held a press conference to announce their acceptance of an invitation to join the Missouri Valley Conference. University President Father Michael Garanzini addressed why Loyola chose the MVC over other conferences. The Missouri Valley League is one of the better leagues in terms of stability, in terms of leadership, uh, and most of all, what was attractive to us was their respect for the, the, the student who is also an athlete. Athletic Director Dr. Grace Calhoun is confident the Ramblers can make the transition. Loyola will be a strong and valued member of the Missouri Valley Conference. Beyond being a world-class university and a world-class market, we're aggressively building programs to return them to national competitiveness. In spring of 2011, this building, the Norville Center for Student Athletes, was completed. In fall of the same year, renovations to the Joseph Gentile Arena were also completed. Perfect timing for the Ramblers to not only join, but house a larger conference. Commissioner of the MBC, Doug Elgin, shares Calhoun's appreciation for Loyola's renovations. And I, I can just tell you this, this is going to be a tremendous home court. We're going to help Loyola as much as Loyola is going to help us. Porter Moser, head coach of Loyola's men's basketball team and Creighton University alum, has experienced both playing and coaching in the MVC. Moser is excited for the change. Sitting here today with an unbelievably powerful brand and respected brand of the Missouri Valley Conference, I can say even more emphatically, there's never been a better time to be a Loyola. Mary Sugden, Studio 51 News. Thanks, Mary. Now, every week our foodie has been taking a look at a full course meal. But what about dessert? Studio 51 Stephanie Skelnick has the sweet answer. Do you love cupcakes? If you do, you'll love Molly's Cupcakes. Located in Wicker Park, Molly's Cupcakes offers a fun, funky take on a popular treat. When you first walk inside the shop, the first thing that catches your eye are the swings located at the coffee bar. The next thing you notice is the many flavors of cupcakes. From peach cobbler to Boston cream to mixed berry, there is something for everyone. I tried the Cookie Monster. Vanilla cake filled with cookie dough and topped with sweet buttercream. It was delicious. It's definitely a must have if you love chocolate chip cookies. Molly's most popular and best selling cupcake is called the Ron Bennington. That is a chocolate cake, peanut butter filling, chocolate ganache icing, and topped with crushed butterscotch. Now the filled cupcakes are a little pricey at $3.75 a piece, but trust me, it's worth it. If that is too expensive for you, you can build your own cupcake with no filling for just $2. Not only do they offer fresh cupcakes, but they also have cheesecakes, cookies, eclairs, Rice Krispie treats, and brownies, all homemade. To check out the wide array of treats and flavors of cupcakes, you can go to Molly's website at mollyscupcakes.com. For Studio 51, I'm Stephanie Skelnick. Thanks, Stephanie. Sounds like a delicious and like maybe a perfect place for a date. And our techie this week, Stephanie Sanford, has an app that can help you snag that date. Stephanie, tell us more. With the school year almost over and summer just around the corner, is everything heating up in your life besides your love life? If so, there's a new dating app that will help you get your flirt on. It's called Tinder, and the way it works is it syncs with Facebook and takes your first name, profile pic, age, shared interests, and shared friends. Now don't worry, it won't show up on your Facebook that you're using Tinder. Next. Tinder locates you and you, then you can find people from up to 500 miles away. Tinder only tells you how many miles away the other person is, so no creeps are going to show up on your doorstep. I set mine up to 100 miles away and I ended up getting every guy on the Notre Dame football team, besides Manti Teo. You'd think they would stick to me and girls in person after his scandal, but good news for the team. If any Facebook users have under 50 friends, they can't get a Tinder, so that cuts down on the fake accounts. Once you're all set up, it becomes a game of hot or not. If you like someone's face, press the green heart. If not, press the red X. 
If you like someone and they like you back, then you two are a match and then you can begin messaging each other. It's great because only people you like can talk to you, so your inbox isn't bombarded with messages from weirdos. Tinder may be superficial, but it's incredibly fun and popular with the college crowd. So if you're lonely or just bored, I recommend checking it out. You never know. A superficial connection might turn into something more. This has been your Tech Talk. I'm Stephanie Sanford. Back to you ladies at the desk. Thanks, Stephanie. The things people think of. Tahara, would you ever use an app like that? Probably not, Caitlin. <laughs> Coming up, our Point Counterpoint segment lights up a debate about age restrictions on smoking. And it's almost May, but it doesn't feel like spring yet. Is it ever going to warm up? Stay tuned for our Weekend Weather Report. You're young. You're in college. We get it. You're gonna drink. But how much? Be smart. Think when you drink. Hello? Hello. Hi. Is this the Phoenix Loyalist Student Newspaper? Yes. I'm near your headquarters. Mind if I drop in? Absolutely. Our offices are in the basement of the CFSU. Yikes. Where are you? Phoenix? Arizona? You know, becoming a part of the Phoenix isn't that difficult. It's actually quite easy. Give us a call, shoot us an email. Who knows? You might even win yourself one of these bad boys. Could change your life. Welcome back. Currently, you have to be 18 to buy a pack of cigarettes, but that could be changing with a new law proposed in New York. Studio 51's Katie Knuckles and Dominique Stem discuss the pros and cons of this plan. Ladies, take it away. New York City is facing yet another big debate that could mean big changes for young smokers. New York is trying to raise the legal age to buy cigarettes at 21. They would be the biggest city in the country to do so. Now, Dominique, what do you think about this? Well, I agree with it. You know, you have to be 21 to buy alcohol because they say at 21 and up is going to be, your brain is going to be more developed. So smoking also affects your brains, it affects your lungs, your limbs, everything. So we need to be consistent when it comes to people's health. Are you going to be 21 or are you going to be 18? You're setting people up for a lifetime of health problems at 18 and I think we just need to be consistent when it comes to that. Right, but we also can't force people to be healthy. Smoking has gone down by 30 percent in the last 10 years and we need to stop making it a taboo. Kids are going to get access to it just the, as um, college kids find alcohol before they're 21. Um, the proposal wouldn't make the, would make the age 21 for buying cigarettes, but it would not prohibit people under 21 from possessing or even smoking them. See, that's crazy. It's so inconsistent. Right. And um, once you're 18, you're legally an adult. At that point, you can buy a gun. You can vote for your, your country. You can fight for your country. Okay, now let me stop you there. You can buy a gun at 18. Have you not looked at the south side of Chicago and all the gang and youth violence? It's crazy. I mean, at 18, you're not as mature as you should be, or, or as, as people are. I mean, you're 18 years old. You're still a child. You're, most of the time, you're still in high school. I don't think that being 18 and buying a gun and smoking cigarettes should be allowed at all, period. 18 is too young. I think you need to be 21. I do agree. 18 is very young. But my final point is going to be that I don't think the government should continue to cut funding to programs that educate young adults on this matter. I think that they should educate them and then have faith in them that they're going to make the right decision as adults. Well, I can agree with you on that. I do agree with the programs, and I don't think they should be cut. But, I mean, next thing you know, with all this inconsistency, you're going to be 18 at the casino, and that won't be good for anybody or anyone's decisions. Right. Well, I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree. For Studio 51, I'm Katie Knuckles. And I'm Dominique Stem. This has been our last Point Counterpoint, but we still want to know what you think. Email us at studio51news at gmail.com and tell us what you think about raising the legal smoking age to 21. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Katie and Dominique. Something that's controversial but we can't do anything about is the weather. And I'm sick of it. So am I, Caitlin. It's hard to stay positive with finals coming up and no sun. So are there clear skies ahead? Let's find out. Here's Studio 51's Kristen Immel with the weekend weather forecast. Thanks, ladies. Chicago has finally discovered what April showers bring, giant puddles. In fact, this month has been Chicago's wettest April on record. 
With showers earlier this week, total rainfall for this month is 8.58 inches. That number shatters in a 143-year-old record. That's actually more water than fits in my water bottle. But Chicagoans, I've got great news for you this weekend. Today is mostly sunny and we'll reach a high near 65 and a low around 47. But it's also pretty breezy out there today. Gusts could be as high as 30 miles per hour. On Saturday, get outside and enjoy that sunshine with a high of 62 and a low around 49. On Sunday, you should consider packing up that snow and rain gear and finding your sunblock. Sunday will be mostly sunny with a high near 63 with some clouds rolling in later. The low will be around 54. So soak up that sunshine, Chicago, and enjoy your weekend. For your weekend weather report, Kristen Immel. Thanks, Kristen. I'm so excited to finally see some sunshine. Maybe I'll buy some new sunglasses. Doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. That's all we have this week. This was the last show of our season here at Studio 51, and we wish everyone good luck on their finals. And congratulations to all the graduates. I'm Caitlin Wilson. And I'm Tahira Rahman. Stick around after the credits to meet the Studio 51 team. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Mary Sugden and I'm a graduating senior. I'm Sean Keenahan. I'll be graduating in December. What was your favorite moment on Studio 51? I have to say my favorite moment was just the camaraderie of our classmates, just watching everybody push everyone each week to do their best. So it's amazing. Definitely. Going off of that, I think my favorite moment was all of our hilarious outtakes and all the times that we had to be quiet as we were laughing behind the cameras. It's tough to name our greatest moment, so. I'm Stephanie Skelnick and I'll be graduating in December. I'm Stephanie Sanford, and I'll be graduating in a week. <laughs> what was your favorite thing? Uh, my favorite part was bringing the, um, the news and the events to our lovely audience. What about you, Stephanie? I loved working with this great group of people. It made it so much more fun. She's right, it did. It was fun. I'm Tahira Rahman, and I'm a graduating senior. And I'm Caitlin Wilson, and I'm also a graduating senior. My favorite part of Studio 51 was learning to edit video and getting to work with my friends. My favorite part of Studio 51 was working with our Commander-in-Chief, Beth Conrad. Hi, I'm Dominique Stem, and I am a graduating senior. I'm Jason Weeder, and I'm a junior. Um, what was your favorite part about Studio 51? My favorite part was uh, getting to produce the Tech Talk segment every week and working with a great group of people. How about you? Um, my favorite part was the sports and also just everyone in all of our outtakes. We were really, really funny this season. Um, Stephanie was quite the character. Oh, she was. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caitlin McMurray. I'm a graduating senior. And I'm Wendy Esparza. I'm also a graduating senior. My favorite part of Studio 51 was working with this great team and working with the Commander-in-Chief, Beth Conrad. And my part, my favorite part was working both in front and behind the cameras and getting to know everyone. Look forward to keeping in touch with everyone and this is our first news team. I'm Kristen Immel and I'm Katie Knuckles and we are graduating in 15 days. Yep, 15. That's pretty crazy. Our favorite part of Studio 51 was working with, with our, our commander, commander and our awesome news team. Yep. And I'm gonna cry? Probably. Probably. Ready? Well, we're out! <laughs>